You want to hear a good story? A couple of hunters went out on a mission to find a variant who's going to be responsible for 5,000 deaths. The variant is an eight-year-old boy. One of the hunters, he paused. Timeline started to branch, more variants appeared. Happened so fast his partner had to step in and prune the kid. We gotta keep the big picture in mind. What happened to your partner? She actually became a judge. That's that. After serving up a fantastic season with the first five episodes all exceeding expectations, does the season and likely series finale follow through on that level or will the show stumble close to the finish line? How will it all end and what will it mean for the MCU? Hi there, it's Micha. If you like to find out then join me for this review video. The episode starts with Loki, now able to control his time slipping, jumping back to the room where it happened. No one else is in the room where it happens. Sorry about that. Where he asks OB for advice. What could we have done differently? Good question. We took too long. <sighs> Followed by a montage of him trying to do it quicker. Let's go faster this time. Time to be brave. Ready? This time. And as this doesn't work out, he tries to do it earlier, soon realizing that to be really efficient, he himself needs to learn everything OB knows about mechanics, physics and engineering. How long would it take? Decades. Centuries. So after literally investing centuries and an endless number of trials, he is actually able to speed things up enough for them to widen the rings of a loom. However, afterwards it is still overloading. The reason for it? It's a scaling problem. You can't scale for it. infinite. <laughs> it's almost as if as soon as the timeline started branching, this was doomed to happen. Which makes Loki realize he has to stop Sylvie from killing he who remains in the first place. After a series of unsuccessful attempts, he finds himself in a conversation with the guy, who figured out that Loki is circling through time to stop Sylvie. How did you know? I know about the slipping. And who do you think paved that road? <laughs> Any guesses? And then drops a major reveal. The temporal loom is a failsafe. When the loom is overloaded, it deletes everything except the sacred timeline. Destroying the TVA in the process as collateral damage is apparently no biggie, as it can be easily rebuilt. So whatever he tries to do, Loki has to realize... But the outcome to this equation it remains the same. You lose. Unless... I'll change the equation. I'll break your loom. But the loom prevents a brutal war where nothing survives, Loki. Not even the sacred timeline. Which leaves Loki with only two options. Break the loom and you cause a war that kills us all. Game over. Or... Kill her. Confronted with this impossible decision, he seeks out Mobius for guidance, which comes down to one main message. Most purpose is more burden than glory. And trust me, you never want to be the guy who avoids it because you can't live with the burden. How do you live with it? Scar tissue. After thanking him, he seeks out Sylvie to catch her up on his options, to tell her that he can only save what can be saved by stopping her, which she gathered means killing her. Not giving you my blessing if that's what you're waiting for. What do I do? It's the sacred timeline or nothing. Do you really want to be the god who takes away everyone's free will so you can protect that? Who are you to decide we can't die fighting? You're replacing one nightmare with another. Which gives him an idea, a third option, which is replacing the loom with something better. But that requires a sacrifice, one that Loki is willing to make. I know what kind of god I need to be. For you. For all of us. He gets into full god mode, haunts and all, destroys the loom and, using his magic, takes all the now dying branches, revives them and leaves with them in tow. He's giving us a chance. He then fights his way to the empty throne at the end of time, 
takes his seat and, using himself as an anchor, firmly plants all branches, creating a multiversal tree. After that, we see that the TVA shifted their work to protect this new setup, which includes keeping track of all the Kang variants. Mobius leaves his post to explore the outside world, but a door is kept open for him. Well, if you ever want a seat in there, it's yours. Thanks. And Sylvie does the same. OB rewrites the TVA guidebook, Victor Timely can live his life without any interference, and Ravona, after previously being pruned, finds herself facing Elioth, the smoke monster. The final episode ends with a look at Loki, being content and at peace with his decision. There you have it, the season finale and likely the series finale. And what a finale it was. Honestly, I had to let it all sink in a bit before I was able to do this review. I liked the conclusion a lot, but needed a moment to sort through my feelings of Loki leaving everything behind. After doing so, I rewatched the episode and liked it even more. This season may very well be the best piece of content Marvel ever created. At the very least, it is the best since Avengers Endgame. It even tops the superb third Guardians of a Galaxy movie. Let's look at the reasons why I think this was a fantastic finale. And to do so, let's start at the beginning. While in the first season, I was a bit worried that we wouldn't buy into the character arc of this variant of Loki, as he didn't go through the same changes as the Loki who sacrificed himself at the start of Infinity War, they totally pulled off that trick. Loki, the character, showcases some of the best written and most interesting character development in the MCU, being there from early in the franchise. And this show supercharged his variant's arc in a believable way, turning him from a petty creature, only interested in the throne, into someone who takes the throne, even though he doesn't even want it anymore. You've been seduced by a throne. The last thing I want is a throne. Sylvie, stop! And he does it to save the multiverse and to protect his friends, bringing his journey full circle. This is also nicely highlighted by the title of the episode, which shared the same title with the first season's pilot episode, Glorious Purpose. And that concept was an important part of both episodes. In the first one, Loki highlighted that he is burdened with glorious purpose, destined to be king, born for it and willing to fight to get there. After becoming a hero though, he learned that his fulfillment comes from a sense of belonging, to be with his friends and protect them which informed his new purpose, like I called out in the last video. And he was so dedicated to it, he literally invested centuries to solve the loom conundrum. This leads to him burdening himself with the task of keeping the multiverse together, avoiding he who remains approach of just protecting one sacred timeline, which took away everyone's free will. He does so to protect his friends, and this truly glorious purpose he accepts willingly, even though it keeps him from his friends. And he is at peace with it. What a growth. And keep in mind the brilliant writing on this show, both regarding the plotline as well as the dialogue. His talk to Mobius was illuminating and later Sylvie inspiring him to find a different approach, not giving him her blessing to just kill her, was fantastic too. And of course the exchanges with He Who Remains were brilliant again. There I actually needed to pause the show at my first viewing, to let things sink in. Like Kang's remark that his variants are already out there, which confused me at first, especially at that point in time, but of course, they are there. The TVA previously only engaged if one of them started to develop into a dangerous direction. We'll find them. There's too many. I won't stop. Doesn't matter. Never stopped me before. And while he may have been right that there are too many for Loki and Sylvie to fight, with a new setup Loki created, the TVA is now working that task as well, and will likely be supported by other heroes along the way, as highlighted by them mentioning the events of Ant-Man Quantumania. I guess one of them caused a little bit of a ruckus on 616 adjacent realm, but they handled it, so we're all good for now. It also highlighted the importance of this show for the MCU as a whole, because even though the multiverse is now growing like a tree, which by the way was a great visual for it, this change doesn't influence past events of the MCU, which happened on the sacred timeline. However, everything going forward is open now and this actually only makes the Kang Dynasty and his variant's appearances in future projects possible. Without it, the sacred timeline and pruning all unwanted branches would have kept that from happening. 
Do you remember that they initially said that the Loki show will not have an impact on the larger franchise? Well, think again, because I guess most of us were expecting a big impact anyway, though likely not even one as big as it turned out to be. So in a way, Loki saved the MCU, both literally by creating the time tree and figuratively by setting up the next phase and by reigniting our faith in the franchise. Well, at least mine, after it recently was a bit shaken. I'm Nick Fury. I'm Even when I'm out, I'm here. And we also have all these clever details the show incorporated, which I really appreciated. Like them always playing around with the Marvel logo at the start, this time having it play backwards as Loki jumps back in time. Or the gold lines we previously saw in the first season at the cathedral, which were prominently shown at the end of this episode as they changed the appearance of the throne. Like I mentioned last season, those lines are a reference to the Japanese art of Kintsugi, where you use gold to repair things that are broken, turning them into something new and beautiful that is even stronger than before. Really fitting. Also, Full Circle was them basically answering all the open questions I had. Like what that failsafe mode was and why the branches were dying away in the previous episode. The loom when it overloads will start a failsafe mode that will prune every branch that is not on the sacred timeline. Check. We learned where Renslayer ended up, though we don't know what that means. Will she return from that place or will she perish? I could imagine there may be a redemption arc waiting for her too. I guess that wasn't the last time we saw her. Although we didn't see Hunter D90 in that place, we can be sure that he is roaming around there somewhere too. We didn't learn what happened with Brett though, but I guess he has played his role and he was just not important enough to showcase, with which I kinda agree. Then we were shown that Miss Minutes indeed was backed up and brought back. And are we sure she won't try to kill us all? Yeah. Furthermore, it was pretty clear that Sylvie didn't lose her memory in the previous episode, because she still uses the master tempad to keep moving across branches and now is free to move around, the same as Mobius. Talking of him, what will happen to Mobius? Some rumors say he will show up in Deadpool 3. That movie will for sure also have a big impact on the MCU, so it may be possible. What we didn't learn was how it can be that Victor Timely now didn't receive the manual when he was a kid as the branches weren't changed and he was already at the TVA. Does this mean the variant we got to know vanished somehow? Maybe this will be addressed somewhere in the future. Same goes for how exactly Loki managed to pull off his stunt at the end. Why he wasn't affected by the time radiation and how he could reshape the branches of the multiverse. But between his magic and the fiction OB referenced in the previous episode, I'm happy to just accept that as is. The finale also revealed why Loki was time slipping, as this was also part of He Who Remains design. We even learned what his complete plan was and that he never really actually wanted to die. Did you really think I was just gonna sit back and let her kill me? So he wanted Loki to take over, which would finally release him from his burden. Something that in a way Loki did, but in a way that, as of now, means that He Who Remains remains dead. He could find himself back at the end of time again if the heroes of the multiverse fail and Kang and his variants win the war. Which I guess we can all agree will not happen. And have you noticed that at this point Loki is stronger than he who remains? As he doesn't need any technology to stop time and travel through it. Basically he who remains manipulations made Loki strong enough to defeat him. Which I guess he didn't see coming. So what does that all mean for Loki? Will this be his exit from the MCU? Will we never see him again? Once more, I think we can all agree that he will return. As he has found his purpose though, I do not see him leaving that place on his own volition. He will not abandon that post, so either he will stay there and gather people around him, like some rumors suggest forming a multi-dimensional Avengers team, or he finds a way to keep the tree anchored without him needing to be there. My best guess though is that someone will end up sitting there while he will receive a mission requiring him to leave his post. I would for sure love to see him reunite with Thor, as his variant came from our main MCU universe, which has the designation 616, he could retake his place on the present timeline. We will find out along the way. Fingers crossed. And with that being said, 
let's go to the rating. But before we go there, let me ask you to like and share this video if you enjoyed it so far. And if you're not a subscriber yet, maybe consider to change that. By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. Now for the rating. As you already gathered, I liked this episode as well. It rounded out a fantastic season, bringing it full circle. And as I rated the season premiere with 10 out of 10 points, I am now doing it again. I rate the finale with 10 out of 10 points. You might wonder why, because there were those two small issues I called out. The Victor Timely Paradox and Loki pulling off his gambit. But I really had to search for those. And the first one might be explained in the future, while the latter I am more than happy to just accept. The episode was once more visually stunning, expertly acted and directed, and the writing was superb. The whole season was just fun from start to finish, even better than the first season, which already was the strongest Marvel show on Disney Plus so far. In case you wonder how I would rate the entire season, mathematically I should give it a 9 or 9.5. But you know what? Screw it. The entire season is a 10 out of 10 for me too. There was not a single episode that fell through. All were great and some even perfect, so that is my call. The show gave me hope for the future of the MCU. Let's hope that they continue on this level and let's hope that Jonathan Mayers turns out to be innocent. Because he is a great actor and losing him would likely undermine everything this show was building up. What about you? Did you like the finale and what about the whole season? Are you thrilled for the future of the MCU or are you experiencing superhero fatigue? Do you think that the franchise would stumble if Kang had to be removed from its future? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. And that concept was an inti integral, was an important part of both episodes. Like what, what, like what that failsafe mode was. <sighs> to let things, to let things sink in. Things sink in. To let, to let things sink in.